Hi guys, uh, this is BJ, one of the co-founders of Super Academy, and uh, today I have with me Miss Sherry. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hello, I'm Sherry Kutu. I'm a, now an angel investor, but also an entrepreneur. Amazing. Uh, interesting that you call yourself an angel investor before an entrepreneur. Um, did you start off doing that? Because I know from conversations we had previously that you started off in terms of the kind of career as an entrepreneur post academia. I'm more an entrepreneur than an angel investor. Um, but you just find it easier to describe. Well, I think actually first. the first time that I introduced, I said I was an entrepreneur and an angel investor. Okay, so, so I sort of, I, I, go, I go both ways. Um, I'm more an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. um, although I have invested in a lot of companies because I'm an entrepreneur that also likes helping other entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And some of the ways that you can help other entrepreneurs is by giving them a hopefully some inspiration and, and b sometimes some money if they don't have any, but they've still got a mm -hmm. good idea um, that looks like it's got legs. I think for me, um, the most interesting thing when it comes to entrepreneurs is that there's sometimes a lot of myths and I'm a firm believer that not everyone is made to run a business, but people should be enterprising and the mindset of problem solving and working in teams is quite important. Um, what are your views on the entrepreneurial myth? So some of the things that classic mistakes entrepreneurs make or some assumptions that you see time and time again that you wish young people that we're working with could kind of just if it about it, understand. I mean, for me, it, an entrepreneur is somebody who b views the world as something which is better than it is, mm -hmm. and tries to find a path with the team to create that world. Okay. So I'm often grumpy about something, and it's like, well, you could do it better, couldn't you? Yeah. And then it's like, okay, I find some other people to help me make it better, and then we make it better. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's just problem solving, and it's a slight discomfort with the way you find something. So my first company were, you know, helped people um, you know, find houses and plan, plan for their education because I thought it was just so backwards mm -hmm. the way that it was. The current company that I'm setting up, which, which you're helping with, is helping kids think about their future mm -hmm. by introducing them to other people who have um, started up businesses, but also when they were kids or you know, in sort of even primary, secondary school didn't know what they were going to do. Yeah. It's okay to not know. Um, but for a lot of people, you, you can be an entrepreneur. You just mm. have to find something that you get excited about um, changing. So when you're excited about changing something, how do you execute on it? That, that granular first step, what is the first step? Um, well, the first step is I usually confirm with other people that there is, a, there is, a there is an opportunity <laughs> or a, pro a problem that needs to be solved mm -hmm. and therefore an opportunity. Because um, I like to check with other people. Mm -hmm. Part of um, maybe it's just me, you know, m me. But I I want confirmation from others that it's a problem worth solving. Yeah. And part of that is I like mission driven businesses. Mm -hmm. So if you if you've got a vision and everybody goes, oh yeah, that would be a much better future for mm -hmm. all of us, then it's really easy to attract people to work with you. Uh, and it's often easy to attract people to um, give you funding as well, because a whole bunch, if a whole bunch of people want to bring about that future, then it's easier to do it. So Wait. I check with friends, friends. Um, and um, some people would say, use your network, use your network. but I often just think I check with other friends. people who- Because they're real humans who give you that honest opinion. Yeah, and that, well, it gives me the honest opinion, but it also increases your confidence mm -hmm. that it's the right thing to do. Mm. And then through talking with that, I don't necessarily always plan to do something, yeah. but after talking to a bunch of people, it's just so obvious that you have to solve this problem and that you've got lots of people who want you to help, want to help you solve it, that you find yourself solving it. Yeah. And then before you know it, you started something again. Um, but that's okay. That's okay. You're always willing but to try But it's more than okay, it's good. <laughs> it's better, excellent. better to try than not to try. Perfect, that's, that's, that's a really good thing to kind of distill. Better to try than not to try. Um, and would you say that that principle applies to someone when they're in that growth stage later on in the business? Oh, Always have that kind of mentality, that mentality never changes. Focus on the problem you're trying to solve, mm -hmm. which means focus on your customers, mm -hmm. which means you have customers. Um, some entrepreneurs, again, these myths, is sometimes it's like a technology and technically it would be better to do this and that's more an academic exercise an mm -hmm. idea if an idea has legs you're focusing on the human being whose problem you're solving mm -hmm. or the opportunity that you're creating for the other person and if you focus on that and there's enough people who also care about solving that problem you'll get there if you yeah. just want to create a new whizzy technology but you don't know who you're creating it for then you can lose your way and mm -hmm. you can spend um, egregious amounts of money yeah. um, 
but I think my guide has always been wh whoever it is that I'm trying to create it for. And what for them? Powerful. Um, if you were to start your career again, it's a question I like to ask people a lot. So, you're 21, on Monday morning, starting your career, have you just done a degree? Have you not done a degree? Taking into the fact that today is a digital world and there's a plethora of careers that someone can go into compared to where we were 10 years ago, 20 years ago, five years ago, even two years ago. Yeah. Um, what would you do? So when I was 21, I had just finished at um, a master's at the London School of Economics, although I'm a Canadian, I had come over here mm -hmm. to do a master's um, in economics. But what I did was became a computer programmer. Mm -hmm. And I would do that again and again and, and again, again and again. Um, I had never done any programming. Mm -hmm. um, and it was kind of a little bit odd to choose programming as your first job. Mm -hmm. But I joined a very rapidly growing um, consulting company that was training people to be software engineers. And I liked the idea of what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And I had been inspired by um, a woman called Steve Shirley, mm -hmm. who had a computer company. And I thought, oh, well, I should, I should program and see. You know, it would allow me to do things that I have no idea how to do. Mm -hmm. So I jumped in, became a computer programmer, and I haven't looked back since. It was a Perfect. really solid grounding. I joined an existing company that was growing really, really fast. Um, but I learned so much. I was still able to apply the concepts that I'd learned at university, which was economics and, um, and political science. But um, tying it up with a skill which allowed you to make computers do what you wanted them to do was the best thing that I've ever done. And I think, you know, there's such a shortage of people who have programming skills. There's, um, it, you know, and there's never too late. I mean, I was 21 before yeah. I started programming. So Monday um, morning, 21. I would start programming if I didn't yet know how. And what, would you work at a particular company or would you just go solo and work at home? Um, you can do either, it depends on what you want to do, and I don't think there's a right answer for, for anyone. Exactly. Um, if for me, I liked the social, I mm. liked meeting colleagues, uh, mm -hmm. and I'm still friends with the people that I started with wow. at that company. Um, they're in fact, you know, godparents to my children. Um, so, mm -hmm. I, it depends. Some people like to work in a social yeah. sort of sense, um, and for me work was a training and I liked what I was doing, but B it was the people that I was doing it with. If you're in a if you're in your your you know your bedroom or your garage, then it can be not quite as social. Yeah. Um, actually but the tech scene in London and the and a, a number of clusters around the UK means that even if you are in your garage you can go out to where the tech scene and yeah. you can find kindred spirits. Um, but I like the social aspect. You go through different stages of your life. Um, there are huge advantages to joining a company that's already scaling mm -hmm. up. So you know, you start something, you fiddle around for a while trying to get the what's called technically the product market fit. Yeah. So you get your product working for your customer. After that, you go into extreme scaling, and that's when you just need lots of people. I would jump think the in. best thing is jump on once a company's got its product market fit, because you're going to learn so, so much, much every single day. You'll be surrounded with people who are also you know, making it up as they go along, but you'll learn more in that than if you're struggling on your own. So first thing, I do it with other people who want to bring about change um, in a fast-growing company. Um, they'll have a real need for you. It's not going to be gentle. You're going to have to figure out how, how to help them solve problems every single day, um, and it will also be social. Um, so do that. do that for a while until you find your thing that you day. want to make happen and then make your thing happen so guess, and bring the team along, you know, find your team with you. That's a perfect way to end. Find your thing and make that thing happen. Definitely. Thank you, Sherry. Nothing better. Thanks a lot.